Nice outfit. What, you miners change regulation uniforms while I've been in here? I'd keep those eyes up and tell me who you are. Atten. Atten Rand. Excuse me if I don't shake hands. The field only causes mild electrical burns. Care to explain why you're locked up? Security claimed I violated some trumped up regulation or another. Take it up with them if you want. But they stopped listening to me shortly before they stopped feeding me. Now that's criminal. This facility's deserted. No one's gonna come feed you. I was hoping you'd tell me what happened. You mean before or after that Jedi showed up? Either way, it's a real short story. You see, this Jedi shows up, and you know what that means. Where there's one Jedi, the Republic will soon be crawling up your ion engine in no time. But the story gets better. See, some of the miners get it into their ferrocrete skulls that since the Jedi's unconscious, they can collect the bounty the Exchange has posted for live Jedi. Well, what passes for the law here didn't like that idea. So the two groups started fighting. Then there was some big explosion. I was sitting here for a long time. Then you showed up in your underwear and things got a lot better. There's a bounty on captured Jedi. Why, why would there possibly be a bounty on Jedi? Don't know much about it. Maybe the Exchange wants one as a trophy or somebody's got something against Jedi and is looking to collect. Not many Jedi left. Wouldn't surprise me if the bounty's pretty high. Not many Jedi left? What happened to them? The ones that weren't killed in the Jedi Civil War ended up switching off the lightsabers long ago. Word is there's not even a Jedi Council anymore, but who knows. I had heard rumors of a war, but a war between Jedi? Yeah, Revan, Malak, and the Jedi that went to join them in the Mandalorian Wars. They turned against the other Jedi and had a scrap that almost laid waste to the galaxy. <laughs> Where have you been? I've been, uh, away since the Mandalorian Wars. Well, I wasn't there, but like all Sith, Revan and Malak turned on each other. After they turned on the Jedi, of course. The rumors I heard said Revan defeated Malak, then went to Korriban to unite the Sith against the Republic. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> wow, I read that wrong. Uh, it's actually... I, I, I want to keep this in line with what I did in the first game, damn it. I was led to believe that Jedin saved... Jedin saved the Red Eye. Oh, I'm doing great here! Yeah, woo-hoo! <laughs> I was led to believe that Revan saved the Jedi and the Republic. There we go. I said it right that time. I guess. There's rumors all over space about it. All I heard was Revan return to pay Malak back for trying to kill her in the first place. You know, women. How long have you been in that cage? Revan was a man, not a woman. Maybe you're right. Maybe I just hoped Revan was a woman. Jeez. These garbled stories. This discussion about Revan is pointless, though. I, I need to know what happened here. Look, not like your half-naked interrogation isn't a personal fantasy of mine, but... Hey, wait a minute. You're that Jedi the miners were talking about. Where is everybody? I don't know. This facility seems abandoned. I mean, stop playing dumb. You must have seen what happened. From my beautiful view in the security cage? Look, I heard some explosions, some emergency alarms, some toxic gas pouring out of the vents. Maybe none of them survived whatever happened. And if they're all gone... Look, hey, let me out and I can help you. I can. I've gotten out of trouble countless times. Well, tell me your plan and we can go from there. This facility isn't a military installation, which means we may have a chance. You shut down the cell security field and I can reroute the emergency system so we can get to the hangars. We grab a ship and then we fly out of here. One thing first. The patients in the medical bay were killed with a lethal dose of sedatives. You know anything about that? Huh? What are you talking about? Never mind. Just checking. So you done interrogating me or are we going to work together and try to get out of this mess? I'll switch off the cage, but if you try and run, I'll cut you down without a second thought. Just so we're clear. Great. Now to business. Let's get to the command console. Stay ahead of me and don't make any sudden moves. Alright, here we are. Now this console is set on automatic hail. You may have heard it when you came in. 
The asteroid drift charts are constantly being updated, so it sends out a transmission to incoming vessels so they don't get crushed into space dust. The hail warns them to keep their distance until orbital drift charts are transmitted, and then provides docking instructions to incoming ships, usually freighters. Thing is, you can bounce that same transmission back to the comm here, and suddenly you've got access to the communication system from the inside. Pure pizzack. The console's ours. Now, all we need to do is reactivate the turbo lifts, cancel the emergency lockdown, and... Hey! Sounds like you're about to tell me something I don't want to hear. This system's been severed from the main hub, after it was locked down from remote. You can't even reroute the system, it's been cut clean. That, would be that wouldn't be standard procedure in an emergency lockdown. No. Someone tried to lock down this whole level tight, and leave us here. Trapped. Shit. There must be some way to end the lockdown from here. I doubt it. All we have is communications back. For all the good trying to shout in a vacuum will do us. Let's see if we can try and reach someone on the comm. Be my guest. Not much else we can do. The comm's all yours. Oh goodness! Epic music! As I did with the first game, I'm not going to tell you which path I'm going down, but this time I actually have decided beforehand what ending I'm going for. So, ah, you can wait and see. You can try and persuade me all I want, but you ain't changing my mind. I know what I'm gonna do. Anyway, we've got administration logs here. Let's. Why the hell not? Let's listen to them. They they serve to give us some nice, some some nice introduction. And I like the slow build of the beginning of this game. Some people hate Paragus. I kind of love it. So bear with me here. Dragged the freighter in. It was lucky it wasn't destroyed when it drifted into the asteroid field. Not much on board. One damaged droid, one annoying protocol droid, and a lot of bodies. Sent the survivor to medical, and the others to the morgue. Didn't recognize the ship's ID code, so we transmitted it to the Republic for some answers. Questioned the protocol droid about what happened. Says his master, the survivor, I guess, was on the Republic ship the Harbinger, and it suffered an engine failure. He says the survivor was a passenger on the vessel and a Jedi. So that's gonna mean true. These people suck at recording logs. Why does every one end in static? I don't I don't think that's ever addressed. I think these people are just idiots. Inventoried the bodies and cargo. Everything matches the protocol droid story. The T3 droid had seized up, so we left it in storage and standby mode. Don't know what code will access it. It could be its voice activated for all we know. We put the protocol droid to work in maintenance, sorting the mining droid comm routines and updating the recognition sensors. Man, to shut him up. When the survivor recovers, hopefully we can get him off this station before there's a... Re and it's always mid-word, too. Jeez. Trouble between the work shifts. Word of the Jedi leaked out and the miners aren't sure what to do with her. Corda's mining crew wanted us to collect the credits for the bounty the Exchange has on Jedi, but I put a stop to that. We're contacting Telos to get the Republic records on the Jedi, but nobody will... No word from the Republic, but I've sent out a broadcom transmission for records on this Ebon Hawk. One of the miners said it used to be a smuggling vessel. Accidents are making the miners restless. The droid behavior course must be undergoing some kind of binary decay. Two miners were drilled by a droid's mining laser, and those blasts in the ventilation tunnels nearly caused the whole facility to blow. All right. And let's access the comm system, trying to get to the dormitories. No response. What about Hangar Bay 25? As you access Hangar Bay 25, there is a series of low-pitched whistles and beeps. It sounds as if there is a utility droid on the other end. Hello? Hello? Can you read me? Can anyone read me? Hey, are you operational? We're trapped up on the administration level. Can you unlock the turbo lifts? Is there some way out of here besides the turbo lifts? I'd rather risk it than be trapped up here. Droid! I am whirring and whizzing and doing droidy things! 
Uh, well, anyway, this is T3M4, as you know, the little utility droid from the first game. And we're getting just a ton of random crap. I am going to... I already have a laser equipped. But we do have some armor for the droid, and a deflector shield, and it's shock arm. That's better than nothing. One nice thing about this game is that it'll tell you when something's empty, so you don't have to waste your time re-looking through it and re-looking through it and re-looking through it, because that's something I always did in the first game. It's just like, did I check this? Epic camera sweep to reveal the Ebon Hawk! Go figure. And we're getting all a whole ton of journal entries. Let's see if we can get through to the fuel depot. Impossible. Need to override it from a console. Hang a bay. Impossible. Need to override it from a console. I would go up to that console right now, but I know that I don't have to yet, so I'm just going to go this direction at the moment. Because this is where I know I need to go. And... Die slowly! Thank you. Oh! Well, that one died pretty quickly. So yeah, we're getting, like, grenades and sonic detonators and all that crap, but I... I don't see the purpose. As has been said before, these things are ridiculously weak. The mining droids Mark 1. And apparently the original Mark was not a very effective Mark. Whatever Mark even means in that, I, I don't know. Why Mark? Mark is a name. Buzz, buzz, whir, buzz, whir. Oh! And we get to go into the fuel depot. That's always good. Get some components. I mean, there's not much to say right now. I'm a droid. What am I supposed to say? Beep boop, chee chee, beep be doop, boop boop. Not like a droid can say jidabada wanna needy bobo, and I could make fun of that. I'm just sort of droiding along. Ah! We've got a data pad, which in this game they actually automatically pop up. Purge the fuel lines, and I found three sonic charges attached inside. I checked the work logs, and only droids have been in the area. I tried to contact security as soon as I found the explosives, but I can't seem to get a signal through. I've removed the remote detonators, and I'll keep the explosives on me until I can put them in a secure hold in the hangar. Good job! You don't seem to have done very well. Good job. Alright. But we've got some explosives, which is what we need at the moment. We've got three deadly sonic mines. And reinforcements have been called. <gasps> With shields! No! Fortunately, there's still Mining Droid Mark 1, and they're still ridiculously easy to deal with. All you have to do is take down their shields. Let's give them a little bit of Droid Shock Arm, actually, because that surpasses the shields. And, the nice thing about that, only T3 can use it, but it's like a built-in upgrade, so you have unlimited uses. And it's actually pretty damn powerful. If you take a look at it, um, it um, uses unlimited. It... The victim suffers 1 to 6 points of damage for each of the attacking droid's levels to a maximum of 10 levels. So, I'm level 3, I can do 3 to 18 points of damage with any hit from that, so that's pretty nice. Um, I'm also going to equip a droid Ion Striker, since we all know that Ion Blasts are particularly powerful against droids, if not against anything else. Oh, but droids seem to be our main thing here. Now, here is one of the more annoying parts of the game. We've got these deadly sonic mines. I don't know why they decided that they had to make it deadly sonic mines, but that, on difficult, 
makes the check impossible to perform in order to open the door. And you're supposed to be able to open this door with those mines. That's the point. So anyway, we set the charge on normal difficulty, and the door is no longer sealed, and we put it back on difficult as if nothing happened. Because I'm a pro at this game, and I don't need it on normal. Here's the 3CFD, which is the droid that would have helped us had we actually done the stupid prologue. And this utility droid looks as if it has suffered irreparable damage. That's too bad. He helped us when we didn't see it. And we get a couple of nice bits of equipment. It's not really necessary, but again, it's kind of stupid that you can't get in there on difficult, and I don't understand that. Anyway, now that we've done all that, let's open a couple more foot lockers with security. And do what we actually came here as the droid to do, which is to access the hangar control. Several parts, several parts have been removed from this console, and a laser drill has been used on a number of subsystems. Despite the sabotage, however, the console's basic functionality was intended to be restored quickly by replacing the missing parts. And I can do that, because I got parts. Actually, I think that was from the locked room. I think maybe you had to... I, I don't know. Don't ask me. Um, emergency control commands. Run a diagnostic. Access to the Paragus emergency subsystems has been rerouted to a fuel depot, blah blah blah, techno babble. Blah blah blah, more techno babble. Let's open the blast door to hangar 25. Oh, oh, failure! Conduit removed! Whoop, 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 whoop. Well, let's open the fuel depot. That we can do. Which is good. That is very good. Alright, um. Docking and takeoff procedures, we don't really need to listen to that. Contraband. That doesn't sound relevant either. But there was a maintenance violation. This sounds like it might be important. Who ordered the mining droids to repair that Jedi's freighter? I come in here off the work shift and three of them are repairing the port stabilizers? Did I miss something? Is somebody planning a trip? Because orders were that the hangar was to be locked down ever since that Jedi arrived. I don't know what maintenance is up to, but you can't just commission droids for repairs, especially with half the work shifts in Med Bay. Those droids are needed to repair the ventilation tunnels before gas builds up to terminal levels. It's not like that ship can go anywhere anyway. Even if it had the asteroid orbital drift charts, the Nava computer's been voice locked. You'd need the access code to get it spaceworthy. Considering this latest droid commission breach, I'm putting the droids in this section under the control of the current dock officer. If anyone sends commands to the mining droids outside this terminal, I'll be forced to enact full override. All right then. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's access the comm system. And it's inoperative. And communication system was purposely burned out with a mining laser. So I totally won't be able to, to talk to Kellia from here. So, with nothing else to do, since this layout is actually fairly linear, let's just go through to the fuel depot. Huzzah. I'm T3. My master told me to do this. Die, heathen! Oh, the Heaven Hawk. I remember that. The ship that used to belong to the Dark Lord Revan himself. And then the Lord of Goodness Revan. He did a heel face turn. Or face heel turn. I don't I don't remember what the term actually is. Anyway, let's let's not worry about TV tropes technicalities. Oh, let's try that again then. Okay. And back into the fuel depot. Looks like we have more force fields that we have no hope of getting through. Or, oh, excuse me, containment field. Is that the politically correct term? But, we can contact the, uh... Ah, there we are. Open emergency hatch on Paragus administration level. Perfect. 
then there's a system log. Within the past day, a series of explosions within the Paragus mining facility had enacted an emergency lockdown. Someone had sliced into the fuel depot computers and created a phantom fuel leak, sealing off the area with force fields to contain the quote-unquote blast. It looks as if someone has been using the lockdown to systematically isolate sections of the facility. That bastard! Oh no, what's going on? No! That you bastard! You killed T3! Bastard!